I have ADD, which is Attention Deficit Disorder. I have uh, sort of a problem with dysgraphia and uh, dyscalculus. I have ADHD and processing disorder and dyslexia and um, really bad anxiety. They thought I was stupid. I felt like I didn't belong there at all. I had no friends. No one. I would have troubles comprehending what I'm supposed to be doing, and uh, the teachers sometimes would get frustrated and just give up on me. I was hanging out with some pretty bad kids. Uh, some were already into uh, gangs. Some were already dropping out before the seventh grade. When I was about seven, my parents sort of were concerned because I knew all these big words and I loved literature, but I couldn't read. Um, and so they took me to get tested and they said I would sort of never read, that I was going to be maybe sort of functionally illiterate. So when I got to Edison, I could read, but I wasn't, it's still hard, it was still hard for me. And my biggest challenges were, I think, more in terms of mathematics and organization. If you talk about the, the mental... I think the, the biggest thing that Edison gave me was a whole lot of confidence. And we're going to narrow it down. So I'm not a great speller, I love writing, but my writing is full of grammatical errors, but I got to found a yearbook and found a paper. I got to speak to other students about disability, so it gave me a lot more confidence and gave me the ability to sort of really self-advocate in a very real way. Academics were great, um, but it was, for me, it was more about the community and everything that I gained from that and small classes and not feeling stupid and not feeling like I couldn't keep up. I have a degree in political theory from the College of Worcester. I have a master's degree from American University in Special Education with a learning disabilities focus. I have a Master's of Teaching from Vanderbilt University from Peabody in Special Education High Incidence. Edison was the thing that propelled me, sort of kept me going, and I felt like I, if I had succeeded there, then I had succeeded one place, and I could do it again. Is that right, Secretary? Anyone who's not dyslexic? I think that's yes. right. Looks good. I got into teaching to help kids like me. So after I got my master's, I came back to Portland and I got a job in the Hillsborough School District. And then Edison called me about halfway through that year and said they had an English teacher, history teacher position opening up and wanted me to come in and interview for it. And then they hired me. I'm a severely dyslexic individual with ADD. So to be able to come back and tell kids, you know, you can do this and it's going to be harder for you and you're going to have to deal with a lot more adversity, but if I can do it, you can do it, and they just need the tools and the strategies to be able to do that. Teaching's my calling, and this is where I got started, so I owe a lot to this school. The number there, the coefficient there, is yeah. one. one. So Excellent. Excellent. So that's using, that's where we use our decision tree, right. right? When I first started this journey, when David was in kindergarten, uh, I had a house, and I don't now. <laughs> um, I've lost almost everything, and still, they've given us a lot of scholarships. And I just knew that if I got him there, it would work out. I was dyslexic and I didn't get any special help. And I have been in menial jobs forever and a day. And I didn't want that for him. So I knew what he could have and I fought the whole way. I just, it just had to be blind hope. They were gonna take my son whether they liked it or not. He was gonna be there. What kind of things are you working on on art line drawing? Is that what you're doing? First week started, and by the end of the week, I had two phone calls from teachers. And they were the phone calls that I think parents, me as a parent, had wanted to hear all of his educational career was, what an incredible son you have. He's very caring, and he's very good at advocating for himself, and he's such a pleasure, and he's doing this and this right, and and it, I took those and left them on my voicemail probably for nine months, and I would play them once a week and probably sob every time. Pat McGuire said the first week, I don't think anybody, including Alex, realized how hard he'd been working all these years. And once he was working and had a direction and a goal and a support system, he just, he just flew. By the time he was done with his Junior year, he came to me and said, Mom, I think I want to run for class president. And I go, go for it, you know. And he had so many teachers encouraging him. So the next senior year, he 
ran for it, and he downplayed it quite a bit, but he got his speech together and everybody encouraged him. And he, I came, drove him home from school and he didn't say anything and he got home and he said, Mom, I'm, I'm student body president. And I just sat there and I can remember on the steps just sobbing. Here's my son who less than a year ago was thinking about taking his life is now feeling the successes. He has ADHD. Uh, he has a processing defect where what he hears, it doesn't respond. The faculty didn't give up on him. And the faculty there, the administrators there, refused to give up on my son. And because they refused to give up on my son, they saved my son. Students have come back after leaving us a, a couple years later and have said, I don't know, I didn't know where I was going, and here I am in my second year at college, and I'm succeeding, and I never thought five years ago that this would be something I'd be doing. In some ways, it is saving their lives. We're not impacting 70 students, we're impacting 70 families, and that's real powerful. If we can get them and we can kind of turn them around and show them their worth and they can go out and give back to the community in the same way, why would you not want to invest in that? Why would you not want to, to nurture that and to foster that and in the end, you know, don't we all get a reward?